and it's a TS1 cattle. So there's a couple different flavors, but the Nema, right? So we're pretty much a Nema state. In the Nema, most of the stuff you'll see in Tennessee is the Nema TS1 standard. It's about a 30-year-old standard, it's pretty old. Now they're starting to go and get a little more modern. So the other two standards are Nema TS2, and there's, there's Type 1 and Type 2. We'll talk more about that. But just to familiarize you, we'll talk about the different standards, but we can just familiarize you with the cabin itself. So, you know what this guy is right here? What this guy does? Yeah. Signal control? The signal controller, right. right. <laughs> and this signal controller is an older one. They can only do four phases. Okay. And the way you know that is because it only has two harnesses. If it was an eight phase, it would have a third harness right there. Okay. Okay. Um, what about this one? You know what that is? Mm. Steve says there'll be a test at the end of all this. That's so the lawsuit saver. That's a lawsuit saver. <laughs> if it's working. So what this is is called a conflict monitor, right? And the newer technology is called an MMU. But what the conflict monitor does, you see these wires here? They're actually wired up up here, down here. So this monitor is monitoring all the 120 volts that's that's going out in the field down here. So in other words. It's looking for conflicting phases. So if this phase was green and this movement or phase was green, it would detect that. It would catch that, and then it puts the intersection on flash. Okay. okay. It also monitors kind of the controller voltage. So if the controller loses its voltage, it'll put the intersection on flash. So there's some things in that. So controller conflict monitor, and this is very old. This is a six channel. The newer ones have two pin connectors on them. This one just has three. And these right here, kind of a mix and match, are your loop detectors. So we have loops here, right? So your loop detectors is basically an amplifier. So you know how a loop works, right? It's an yeah. inductive field. Right. So they cut wires, they, they cut slots in the road, they wrap wire in there, and they bring it back. And they basically make a big coil in the roadway. Okay. They hook them up to these amplifiers. All these are wired into this panel down here. And these are the actual wires coming in from the field. So basically it makes a big magnetic field and works on inductance, right? Mm -hmm. And when a car runs through that magnetic field, the metal on that car changes the frequency of that inductive or magnetic field. And that's how, and then when, it, when this senses a change in that magnetic field, it outputs a call. And that call goes to the controller and it says, hey, there's somebody on phase four, wow. you know. Now, if your loop breaks out there and it's hooked up to one of these sectors, it'll put a constant fault in there. And then, you'll get, if it's a side street and there's no traffic, you'll still get a green and the problem is it'll max that green out. So if you had 20 seconds of available green time or a 20 second max time, you get every bit of that time if your, if your detector's broken and it's put the call in there, right? So controller, conflict monitors, and detectors. These are your load switches. So for every phase, you have a load switch. And what the load switch does is it takes an input that sends 120 volts. So if you look down here, you see these wires right here? There, there, and there. Those are the actual field wires that are going to your signal heads. Green, yellow, red. So we were just getting um, familiar with orientation, phase orientation, right? So if you walk up here and you look out here, how many movements of traffic? Now you say, just by looking at your signal heads, not looking at anything here. Four, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's four phases, and you're right. There's a straight through, or they turn left or right, straight through that way, that way, left turn. Right. So if you look down here in your cabinet, you see these load switches. Right. How many do you have? One, two, two three, three, four. A load okay. switch for every phase. If you bend down here and look at the wire, some of the cabinets are actually printed. You can see like phase one or channel one. But if you look down there, you can see four sets of wires that are landing. Okay. okay. So that's how you orient yourself to the intersection, how many phases there is. Usually before I even open the cabinet door, I'm looking around and trying to familiarize myself with the physical layout. So it kind of gives me an idea when I open the cabinet what they're doing. 
Remember we talked about an overlap yesterday that was a slave to a phase yeah. who had phases? You see this guy over here? That's your overlap. So the overlap in this situation is cut with these straight grooves right here. So when the left turn comes on, you'll get the green ball too yeah. going this way. Yeah. And when those green balls come on, these will stay on the way So. All right. Got it. An overlap is basically my, my, my simple definition of a slave to a phase. It's a green, yellow, red output that does what its parent phase does. So if its parent phase turns green, it turns green. If it turns yellow, it turns yellow. So in this case, when they have four phase cabinets, they're trying to get creative and, and, and create an, another movement of traffic. And, and so they use an overlap. Okay. How many signals do y'all have here? Couple, two or three? Yeah. Three, I think, is it? Good. Oh, one, two. Say. NEMA TS1 controller. Most everything we look at will be NEMA. There's another world in traffic called the 170 2070 world, right? Georgia and California has, and New York has a lot of that stuff. There's one town in Tennessee that has 27s, that's Columbia, Tennessee. Everything else is NEMA, whether okay. it's a TS1 or TS2. Okay. Is that the only one, Columbia? The only one, yeah. The only reason he is some guy. East There's an East Tennessee has a TS2 Type One, but I don't know if any that's got 2070. That's the, what I was thinking. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. The reason why he, they've got it is because some guy from Huntsville come up there and he just thought it was the greatest thing, and he talked the city into going that route. I'm like, it's the greatest thing if that's what you're used to working on from day one, but if you're not, it ain't the greatest. Talk more in the truck on the way back, but if you have a shelf mount detector, that means. A detector that's on a shelf instead of a rack, that's okay. a dead giveaway. It's a TS1. Okay. Right? The other thing is, this controller doesn't have a port called an SDLC port. It's a, basically an RS485 data port, right? Okay. So any TS2, whether there's two different flavors or two different versions of TS2, you want type 1 and a type 2. If, in a TS1 cabinet, you won't have an SDLC cable hooked up. But either flavor of TS2, you have an SDLC cabinet, hook cable hooked up to the controller and one to the MMU, but these don't have the port for that because they're not, they're TS1s. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'll show you some pictures too, and we'll talk about it in the cabinet, I mean, in the, in the vehicle room. But, so that's the base. So why they went to TS2 is because it's safer. So instead of the monitor just monitoring here for power, they're actually talking back and forth. They're passing data packets. So if one of them isn't responding, they'll know there's a problem. In a TS2 cabinet, the controller can put the intersection on flash as well as the conflict monitor. So it's a safe issue.